let's talk analytics. I know a lot of people are not too excited about that, but it needs to be talked about. Um, so my name is Camila Gornia. I'm a digital marketing strategist for modern women entrepreneurs who want to get seen and get paid online doing what they do best. And the topic today is Google Analytics. And a lot of people are very confused about them, about it. They don't really know how to get started, how to, why they even need it. And I just wanted to do a really quick video to kind of explain to you why you need to have it implemented on your site and how you use it to really make it, you know, be useful to you. So, uh, first of all, you know, you need Google Analytics because it allows you to track, um, it allows you to really see where people are coming from onto your site, how people are engaging with your site, where are people going to your most popular pages, um, how often are, or how frequently are people coming onto the site and leaving right away, uh, and how you can really use this, uh, these insights to uh, optimize your site and make it convert better and just be more user friendly. And yeah, and this is just based on the analytics. It's not any like design kind of stuff. So so, um, you know, it's not so much uh, user experience necessarily, but you can definitely draw some conclusions from it uh, just based on the behavior that people have uh, in terms of just data. So uh, it's really easy to install it if you have WordPress. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over to my screen to basically show you how you can install it really quickly. And uh, that's going to be right after... I done talking and you can see it's super super simple it takes like five seconds um, and then you can start tracking data just from there so once you have all this installed you can really see where people are coming from what they're doing and, and it gives you a lot of really important information for optimizing if you want to uh, you know if you should be uh, optimizing some of your pace, uh, your pages or your posts for better SEO to get more organic traffic, so like traffic coming from search engines, you know which ones to to pay attention to a little bit more. Where you need to put more, um, you know, maybe promotional uh, messages, uh, you know, for the popular posts, and it just gives you, you know, a lot of really great information that you can use for making your site better. And why you should be using Google Analytics also. Uh, it's just, you know, it's integrated with a lot of different uh, formats. It's really the standard for using. Um, it's free to use. Uh, I tend to not rely on, you know, I have Jetpack, uh, if you're using WordPress, I have Jetpack uh, stats installed too, and that's fine. It's not always the same as Google Analytics because it doesn't tell you, like, how many unique visitors came in, so how many individual people came onto the site every day. It just tells you, like, views, how many you know, just in general, um, which is, so it's not as specific and it's really, really good to have this information. Um, so I'm going to have future videos for you just to see, uh, how you can utilize this and make your site better using Google Analytics. By the way, I am not a Google Analytics expert. Uh, I am not as data driven as like super analytical person. Uh, it's really important to know though. Um, and it's really important to know how you can use it just as a regular person, just like I am. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to how to install it and how where to look at different things to really get started with using Google Analytics. And then um, in future videos, you'll be able to see how you can make it to actually, you know, impact your site and your business. Okay, I'll see you right there. Hey there, this is Camila Gornia, a digital marketing strategist, and I just wanted to do a quick video to show you how to set up Google Analytics and how to really to see what you need to look at that's important. So um, this is actually great timing because I need to uh, create a new property for uh, Tell Summit that I'm creating right now for for the in WordPress. So I don't have a GA installed for this yet. So this is a great opportunity for me to show you how to do that. So first of all, I you know you're if you don't have anything here, this will probably be it'll probably look different because I have several properties and several accounts. Um, so once you have an account set up, you basically create a new property, which is the new website, and you basically follow these instructions. So um, you type in the name of the website, what the URL is, um, select the industry, they don't have a mark, there we go, and then you can have the correct reporting in your time, and you get track and ID. Okay. 
So now what you can do is if you don't have WordPress, you can basically, you know, whatever uh, CMS you're using, you can copy and then paste this following the instructions that they have um, somewhere on this page. The easiest way to do this is, whoops, wrong one, um, is to go into plugins and add new. And we're going to go ahead and search for a new plugin called Google Analytics Injector. And I'm going to go ahead and install this plugin. And this plugin, what it does is basically um, inserts the Google Analytics code into your WordPress site on the back end without you having to do any code. So it's very, very simple. Um, so then you go into settings and select Google Analytics Injector settings. And it's going to ask you for three different things. So you're going to go back to Google Analytics here. Um, and you're going to copy this tracking ID. Put it in here. The domain. So it's just like dot domain.com. And I usually just, whatever, just keep it. And then update options. I think it updated. Awesome. So that is basically all you need to do. And then you have to give it a couple of days to start tracking because um, past data is not going to be shown here because, you know, things are just going to get start tracking from this moment on, which is when I installed this tracking code. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to, what to look at in terms of um, your performance on your site. So this is from one of my other businesses. So this is how the, the dashboard looks like. So um, I haven't been working too much on it, so it's not too big. But um, basically, you know, it, it shows you from the past month. You can you can select how big of a time range you want to look at. Um, shows you how many people are coming into the site are new visitors versus returning visitors. How many pages you'd had. Um, how many um, sessions you had. How many users separately, unique users you had, unique visitors. Um, what is the average duration? Um, what's the bounce rate? Well, not too bad for a bounce rate, actually. So the bounce rate um, is basically how many people come onto your site and leave right away. So the the more people leave right away, the higher the bounce rate. So when they stay on your site for, I don't remember how many, how long it is. I think it's more than a minute or 30 seconds, probably, or maybe three minutes. I don't know. If they stay on your site for a little bit longer of a time, so it shows like they're reading or if they're browsing to another page on your site or going to another post on your site, that means that person that has not bounced and therefore your bounce rate goes down. So it's really important to have the bounce rate as low as possible. For this particular blog, um, it's, it's just a blog. Uh, it's not e-commerce. So usually e-commerce um, has an even lower bounce rate uh, but for a blog and things like that, you know, a lot of times people are coming in from, uh, from Pinterest and you'll see my top uh, traffic sources really quickly soon um, but a lot of times people are especially from SEO like people are coming for a certain solution they might not be interested in learning more uh, which is fine so you know there's different things that you can learn how to keep people on the site longer which is um, outside of the scope of this program but you know just keep that in mind for what is you know what to look at um, you can see what the language people are using on their browser and all these different things that are not really that important for for you, honestly. You can really play around with the audience in general. Like, um, this is very new, the cohort bait analysis. They literally added this, like, a few weeks ago. Um, so this is pretty cool just to just kind of play around with, um, you know, you can see demographics, which can't really see it anyway because... I don't even know why. Um, I never really look at this stuff because I know who my audience is. I don't need to look at this. This is more so for like e-commerce and if they're, they're trying to change their targeting, change their messaging based on who already visits their site. So this is a little bit different than what you guys are doing here. So what I really look at is acquisition. And first of all, I look at social and then overview. So this shows me how many people have been coming in through in, in this time frame through these different social platforms. Okay, one thing I will say, this is not always correct. A lot of times if somebody opens, uh, so if, if somebody sees my, my thing on Facebook and they open that link in a new tab rather than clicking on it with their left button and then opening it directly, this is not going to be... Um, it's not going to be counted as Facebook. It's going to be counted as direct. And I'm not going to say too much more because I know I'm going to confuse you. Google Analytics are intense and they can be confusing, especially for people that are not super familiar with it. So, yes, yeah, so I'm not going to talk too much about this, okay?
basically this is where you see where people are coming from. So it tells you the most performing ones, tells you where to focus on. Uh, clearly Pinterest works quite well for me. Um, so this is where, you know, it, for, for this particular market, you know, food and health and, and, and wellness has been going really, really well for me. Um, so other things you can look at is like landing pages, uh, what are the sites that people are mostly coming onto from social media? So these are the most popular sites that are pages or posts um, that people are coming onto um, from, you know, where, from social in general. Uh, what you can also do is click on all traffic and then look at channels and see how things are comparing here. So most of my traffic comes from organic search, which is SEO. So this is great. It looks like people opted into my um, newsletter from this too, so that's really great. Um, by the way, you will not have this section, the conversions, unless you create goals, which is, I'm not going to really talk about this here because you don't need to have it. It's great to do uh, if you want to search for some um, some things to help you with that. You can probably search for some tutorials and do that, but I'm not going to cover this in this video. So yeah, this, these are pretty much the things that I really focus on here. Um, you can play around with more of this, but this is the main, um, the main things that I really focus on. Okay.